Black Clover has showed us that the five-headed dragon are no match for Asta and the gang as long as they work together. So with that out of the way, we had a slice of life chapter. Now, if you could absolutely obliterate that like button, I'd greatly appreciate that. But without further ado, let's get into the video. After Asta defeated the five-headed dragon, the skies that were once cloudy are now clear. And we can see here that the citizens have now noticed that because the islands outside of Goshu have been covered with Yoyuku clouds because of the dragon's influence. So a lot of these people have probably never seen in a clear sky. Asta notices that Heath was actually somebody that he battled before, although he was supposed to have died back then, so he's confused as to why he's here. Hey, who on earth is this? Ryu points out that Lucius is capable of resurrecting people on the level of Grand Magic Knights. So any formidable opponent that they've battled in the past, he can bring them back and make them paladins so that they're on his side. You what? With the dragon slain, Asta wants to go back to the Clover Kingdom, but there's no way for him to return at the moment. But Ryu with his ability knows that the Black Bulls are actually on their way to find him. And since they have three days left, he's suggesting that Asta should trust his comrades and wait on them. And Asta agrees, so they just decide to recover and prepare for the inevitable. And with that, they decide to throw a party. Let's go! I mean, they gotta recover anyway, they might as well get lit. Also surprised to see everybody so laid back and like so cheery, but I guess that's like the difference between the Clover Kingdom and the Land of the Sun. And we get to see here that Sister Lily is actually sleeping comfortably, so Asta doesn't have to worry about her and just focus on recovering. Ichiga here realizes that she was wrong about Asta, since he's the man who slayed the five-headed dragon and cleared the skies to the Land of the Sun. Ryu even points out that he hopes that they'll pass down tales about him. That'd be pretty cool to see a time skip where it's like in the future of their descendants and Asta's in their history books. That'd be dope. Now what's crazy here is Ichika points out that the one who destroyed the Yami clan wasn't my big brother. It was me, wasn't it? And there's like an awkward silence here as Ryu just sips on his sake. <laughs> now that's crazy because before I had assumed that it was the boogeyman's ability that she was up against because obviously the boogeyman can show them memories and stuff but I just assumed they altered it because I thought they were going with the whole thing that Yami killed the clan but if it actually was her that's definitely an interesting twist. It's kind of nice to see such a growth in character development in quite a short time too. So Asta being 18, he's legally able to drink now. Granted, during this time period, there probably wasn't even laws on drinking or anything. Nonetheless, it is nice to see Asta get his first buzz. And while he's having his drink, Ichiga comes in and apologizes for speaking on Yami the way she did. But it's funny, like, Asta's too faded to properly process what she's saying. And he just kind of brushes it off. He said he's proud of her for admitting it. She's all like, you're an awfully cheeky junior. Just walks off. So I guess she doesn't want to party with the gang. So we see that serving doll Bruh. that we first seen when Asta first appeared in the line of the sun. So also delivers other drinks as well. So it's not just tea. They say, you want to eat? You want to drink? The Ochami doll is coming your way. Now Asta here is asking the good questions because I've been wondering this as well. He says, I've been meaning to ask, the heck is this Ochami thing? Keep seeing these everywhere. Komari here gives us an explanation on what it is. She says, a long time ago, the land of the sun was almost wiped out by a grody famine. That is until Ochami totally saved us. She's like, the god of food. So the doll is actually modeled after Ochami. But the thing is, we can kind of see here that Ochami looks a lot like Charmy. We're brothers! Or should I say the other way around because this is actually history. But considering the fact that they look so similar and that their names actually kind of similar as well, this has to be a predecessor of Charmy's. They kind of went over a brief here, but I mean, there's got to be more to it. This probably would explain a lot more about like the dwarf race and stuff. And they say the only reason we're alive and able to eat delicious food like this is thanks to Ochami. Chami to all Chami Banzai to food Banzai. And it's funny because us is just like, wait, so she really isn't Charmy. Hmm. But Charmy might just be a descendant of Ochami. So I mean, so everybody's all eating, having a good time. But Jozo here is all like, worthless dullards like myself don't deserve to eat. And he's over here sulking, probably because when he was against the dragon, he was like injured and couldn't perform. But at the end of the day, they won. So it's like, I don't know. <laughs> but he doesn't seem to be satisfied with that. <laughs> And Komari and Jozo here are just going back and forth as usual. Now what's funny here is Yosuka is actually interested in the women from the Clover Kingdom. He's like, next time, why don't you introduce me to some strong women from your country, eh? And what's crazy here is, I don't know if this is a coincidence or intentional. He also adds, do you know anyone that uses flame yojutsu? And of course, we all know who Mario Leona is. And thinking about it, that is kind of a good ship, I ain't even gonna lie. Mario Leona and Yosuga. <laughs> 
sensational. I'm definitely interested to see just how their interaction would be. <laughs> I don't know, it's supposed to be some shenanigans once they meet. They, I mean, they might just get along. Who knows, though? But it's crazy how he wanted somebody who's strong and a flame yo jutsu user. And they literally have the perfect candidate for him in the Clover Kingdom. That's wild. And it looks like Ozzy here is starting to get sick. Looks like he's about to throw up. But of course, this is his first time drinking, so that kind of makes sense. They rush him away before he makes a mess. Dizemon takes him to a wash house so that he can sober up. So it looks like that's enough drinking for Asta. But that makes sense. I mean, if he drank anymore, he'd probably just throw up and then make a mess. So much chaos will probably break out. So Asta goes into the water and it looks like he has it all to himself. He goes in and it's all warm and he's enjoying it. But out pops Ichika. She just comes out of nowhere. Damn! It's funny how her straight face is. She's just like, what? She doesn't even process what's going on. So this is where she went when she stormed off. She must not be a drinker because everybody else was having fun, having drinks and stuff. And then she was just here the whole time. But it's funny how they bumped into each other and he just sores up instantly because he thinks he's about to get killed. <laughs> it's funny because he assumes that she's probably going to try and kill him. But she's just as scared as he is. And she's just like, what? What are you doing here? And that boy takes out running for his life. And Dicemon said that it was a girl's turn. So I guess they don't have separate areas for the boys and girls. They just like take turns. Yeah, that's crazy though. A drunk Asta is hilarious. We come into the next day here as Asta wakes up and he's actually greeted by Ichika, ironically. She says good morning to him. And then of course he apologizes for last night. But she says, I'll make sure you take responsibility for that, you fool. So it looks like she's gonna make him pay for it some way. So it seems as though that Ryu informed the Ryuzen of the whole Judgment Day thing. As Yosuga points out, you know, I was told about your big showdown coming up. We know you don't want to just sit around. So I reckon you want to train with us some more, right? And they're all assembled there. So it looks like they're about to go have a training session and they invited Asta to join them. That was kind of random, but I don't know if Ichiga didn't get any sleep or if she's just tired or something, but I can't help but feel like Ichiga looks like hung over here. <laughs> but the way her eyes are all low, she looks kind of faded still. Which is ironic because it wasn't shown that she was drinking and like she straight up stormed out and they found her at the pool. But here she looks like she's hung over or like or sleep deprived or something. <laughs> but I guess it's just classic Ichika. So we get the end of the chapter here as Asta agrees to the training as there's three days left until Judgment Day. So yeah, we've seen just how strong Asta is just after learning Zetan. So now we get to see what it's going to be like after he, you know, gets a good amount of training in with Zetan. Granted, he's probably only going to be able to get like two or so days in because we don't necessarily know just when the black bulls are going to find him or when he's going to regroup with his comrades so he might not get the full three days in i mean because even if he does i mean it's just three days but still to get training with z10 like after learning it he can master it to some degree and that's definitely going to matter because for what he's up against he's definitely going to need to be able to use z10 like as efficiently as possible well if you made it this far i appreciate you sticking around if you could destroy that like button for me i'd greatly appreciate that consider subscribing as well you'll like it here i promise well i'll see you in the next one thank you for watching